Hey everybody, Darren Cross here, week seven. We are talking about chapter nine, and this chapter should be extremely interesting to you because this chapter is all about payroll. So we're gonna dig in and talk about the various ways that people get paid. Uh, and we're gonna do some calculations that you probably always wondered how they came up with this stuff. So um, you're gonna be able to calculate this stuff on your own here. So let's get right in. Um, the first thing we want to do is look at uh, different types of payroll cycles. This is extremely important. And if you, depending upon where you've worked, you may have realized that there's some weirdness going here. And if you want to understand how much your check is going to be, you got to understand how often you're paid. And where I say the weirdness comes in is between biweekly and semi-monthly. So we'll talk about that in a second. So people can be paid weekly, which means each week they get paid. So there are 52 weeks in a year. So that means that they're going to get paid 52 times in a year. Or someone can get paid bi-weekly, which is every two weeks, every other week. Okay. So if they get paid every other week and there's 52 weeks in a year, they're going to get paid 26 um, times in a year. Okay. And then there's semi-monthly, which is twice a month. We need to understand that every two weeks is not the same as twice a month, right? So we have 52 weeks in a year, but we, you know, we have 12 months and there's four weeks in each month. So isn't that 48? 12 times 12 times four is 48. Yeah, that is 48, but not every every uh, month is 28 days, right? There's only one. And so when you add up all those extra days, you get all of this extra time. So there's really 52 weeks. If you divide 52 by um by two you get 26 and not half of 48 which would be 24. the reason why that matters is if you're trying to figure out what your money is going to be for the month you need to understand do i get paid every other week because what's going to happen is a couple of times a year you'll get paid an extra check and you'll, if you pay your bills monthly you'll say hey i have an extra check here and it doesn't seem like there's anything that this is supposed to go on so if you're used to living with that every other week money um then that can kind of confuse you a little bit. Or we can get paid monthly, 12 times a month. That's going to come into play when we try to figure out some of the calculations that we're going to figure out. Um, and here are some, uh, this is the basic formula for how we calculate pay. Our gross pay, which is all of the money that we earn, is our hourly, um, the hours that the employee work times the rate per hour, right? So if I get paid $10 an hour and I work five hours, I made $50, okay? Then there's the overtime pay rate, which is the regular hourly pay rate times one and a half. So it's time and a half. So you time whatever that pay rate is by one and a half when you calculate this, right? So if I make $10 an hour, my overtime pay rate is one and a half times that. So one, the 10, and then half, five, so 15. Okay, so my overtime rate is 15. Um, gross pay is um, earnings for the 40 hours of straight time and then anything over 40 hours is overtime. So that's how we figure it out. We multiply our hours times our hourly rate and then anything over 40 is multiplied times our overtime rate, okay? So let's look at this. This person makes $9 an hour. This is an old slide, obviously. And if you add all of these up, Let's see, it's um, 61 and a half hours, right? But only 40 of those are going to be straight time. And then the other 21 and a half are going to be overtime. So the straight time is going to be multiplied. The 40 hours is going to be multiplied times nine. And then the extra 21 and a half is going to be multiplied by the overtime rate, which is one and a half times that. And what is that? So you have nine times 1.5 is what? 1350, right? So let's look at this. Um, nine times one and a half is 1350. That's your overtime rate. The gross pay is uh, gonna be 40 times that rate. And then you have to you have to times the extra times this 1350, right? So 40 times nine, that's a straight time rate. And then those extra 21 and a half times the overtime rate. So that person earned uh, $650 for that week. 650 and 25 cents for that week. Now that's a gross pay. We know that some stuff is gonna come out of that, right? Now there's different types of ways. Not everybody gets paid by the hour. People can get straight, 
can get paid uh, straight piece rate pay. And that is the formula for that is the gross pay is the number of items that they make times their rate for, for the items, right? So the number of units times their rate per unit. So Logan Company pays Ryan Foss for the number of dolls he produces in a week. During the last week of April, Ryan produced $900. He's paid 96 cents per doll less any effective unit. So they take the defective ones out and they pay him for the, the good dolls that he makes. So, so what's his gross pay? Well, he gets paid uh, 96 per doll, right? He made $900, so it's 900 times 96 cents, 864. Gross pay before all the deductions. That's what, that's what we're saying here, okay? Now, there's something called Differential pay. This is still piece rate pay, but it's a little bit different. What it means is you get paid on different levels based upon your production. So in this situation, Logan pays Abby Rogers on the basis of the following schedule. On the first 50 items she produces, she gets paid 50 cents. On the second 100, if you see here, there's that's actually 100. So 51 to 150 is 100. So from item number 51 to 150, she gets paid 62 cents. 151 to 200, she gets paid 75 cents for each one. And then anything over 200, she gets paid 125. So you don't say, if it's over 25, multiply everything times, or if it's over 200, multiply everything times 125. No, you make 50 cents on the first 50. So if you if you uh, make 50 items, you're going to have 50 cents times 50, which is what, $250? No, $25. $25 on that, right? And then if you if you make 51, you'll make $25 on this, and then you'll make 62 cents on that one item. Right? So she made 300. So here's how we do this. We, how many, this is how... This is how to do this. How many are in here? 50. How many are in here? 100. How many are in here? Well, 151 to 200, that's 50. So 50, 100, 50, you have 200, right? And then how many are over 200? 100. So we know that it's going to be, right off the bat, you know that if it's going to be over 200, you know how many it's going to be over, right? So if there's 300, you know already there's going to be 100 over this. And then everybody who works at places, they know their pay, right? So this is going to be 50 here, 100 here, 50 here, right? So if you count 1 to 50, there are 50 units here. If you count 51 to 150, right? So basically 51 to 150, there's going to be 100 units there. And then if you start counting at 151 and count to 200, that's 50. Because all of these are going to equal 200 before you get here. And then anything over 200, you get paid this rate. So 50, 100, 50. So we multiply 50 times 50, 100 times 62, and 50 times 75. And then 100 times um, 125, right? So 50, 100, 50, 100, right? So this is, this is that first amount. So this is right here. This is the second amount, the 100 units times 62. This is the 50 units times 75. And then all of the units that are over 200. There were 300. How many over 200 is it? It's 100 over, right? So then you multiply this. So you add, you multiply these together, 50 times 50, 25. 100 times 62, 62. 50 times 75, 3750. 100 times 12, uh, 125 is a dollar twenty-five is one hundred and twenty-five. Add these up together, and the gross pay is two forty-nine fifty. Now, commission is kind of the same thing, right? So, commission is a percentage of the sales that a, that a salesperson has, and a draw is an advance on that commission. A draw is a loan, so that draw has to be paid back. A lot of times, people work commission, and they just so that they can live in case they don't have any sales. They get something anyway. But then if they sell something, they have to pay that loan back, basically. Okay? And the reason for that is um, people want to make sure that you can eat while you're doing stuff. But if you, you know, 
If you're working for years, if you work for a year and you haven't sold anything and they have to keep drawing, you know, loaning your money on the draw, trust me, you're going to get fired. They want you to sell something and it's worth it for them to pay you because they know that you're going to be selling something and that they're, they're going to get paid. So let's look at how this works. Logan Company pays Jackie o Okamoto a straight commission of 15% on her net sales. So net sales are the, the total sales less any returns that come in. In May, Jackie had net sales of 56000 Logan gave Jackie a $600 draw. A draw is a loan that has to be paid back. What's the gross pay? Well, 15% on her net sales. What of her net sales? 56%. So it's 15% of 56 or 56,000. 15% of 56,000. And then once you figure that out, 15% of 56,000 is 8,400. Then you have to take that draw out of there because that's a loan. So her net pay is going to be $7,800. or grow, the net for this, but her gross pay. This is gross pay before anything is taken out. Now, just like there's variable piece rate pay, there's variable commission as well. So up to 35,000, 4%, anything between 35 and 45. So this is 10,000. This should be, this should be actually um, 3501, right? Yeah, it is. Excess of 35. So that's anything from $35,001 to 45000 And this should be over 45000 which is 45001 and above, right? So anything between here is 6%, and anything above this is 8%. So on the first 35000 the commission is 4%. On the next 10000 the, co the commission is 6%. And anything over 45, see, this is 35 plus this 10 is 45. Anything over 45 is at 8%. Okay, so we're, ca we're calculating three different rates here. So last month, Jane Ring's net sales were 160,000. All right, so she's way over 45. But we know how this is going to go. Right off the bat, take this 160 from the 45 or 45 from the 160, so you know what's above. 45,000, and then you know that 10 is going to be here and 35 is going to be here, right? So that's what we did. We took that 45 from 160 and we got 115, and that's what's going to be at 8%. And we know that this is 10%, and we know that this is 35 or 10,000, and we know that this is 35,000. So 35,000 times the 4% is 1,400. The middle 10,000 here times the 6% is 600. And then anything above this 45,000 is going to be at 8%. And that's 115,000, right? So 115,000 times 8% is 9,200. Add all of these together, you have 11, oh, sorry, you have 11,2. And this is gross pay. Now, sometimes people get a salary plus a commission, right? So they get their money, and then they get a commission. So Logan Company pays Joe Roy a $3,000 monthly salary plus a 4% commission for any sales over $20,000, right? So usually when there is a salary and a commission, they usually say that you have to have a minimum, you have to have minimum sales, Okay. So minimum sales because they're saying, well, we're gonna we're not gonna pay you on that. We're already paying you three thousand dollars. So any sales that uh, are over twenty thousand dollars, they actually pay four percent for. So last net last month, Joe's net sales were fifty thousand. So he's gonna get this three thousand plus any amount four percent of any amount over twenty thousand. Well, what's how much over twenty thousand is this? Fifty minus twenty is thirty. So he's going to get three thousand dollars plus four percent of thirty thousand, right? So three thousand plus four percent of the amount over twenty thousand, which is thirty thousand. So this times this is twelve hundred dollars. Three thousand plus twelve hundred. They didn't they didn't do it out here, but three thousand plus twelve hundred is forty two hundred. Okay. So those are the ways that we earn our gross pay, but let's understand what's going on here, right? So 
there are different things that we'll see here on a on a payroll register. Um, and let's just talk about some of these things and then we're going to go into this. Right. So um, right here we have the allowance and marital status. So this is saying married with two allowances. OK, that's going to come into play when we figure out federal income tax later. What is our cumulative earnings? In other words, what have we earned before this payday? Right. What's the um, what's the earning per week? And then what is the regular pay? Right. So regular, if there's overtime, this is the gross pay. And then what's the cumulative earnings, including this date? Right. After we run this payroll, what is what is the new cumulative earnings? This is our FICA tax. So that's composed of Social Security and Medicare. And we're going to talk about that. And this, or this is the earnings. This is the um, the FICA earnings. So this is the part upon which we're going to uh, base our tax. These are the actual taxes. This is our state income tax, federal income tax withholding, state income tax withholding. And there might be some other things that come out. So once you take all of these things away from your gross pay, you're left with your net pay. So net pay is what's paid after, um, after you take out all of your deductions. So when we're talking about um, Social Security, we're saying that Social Security is 6.2% uh, of the first $128,400 that people make, okay? And this is the tax that you have to pay for that, right? 6.2% of the first 128,000. Anything above that, you don't pay on. But on Medicare, you pay 1.45% on everything. Okay? So this is the part that is probably the most intensive for this chapter, is, is figuring out... Um, what the what your federal income tax withholding is this is not your federal income tax this isn't what you owe this is just what they're going to take out of your check based upon several factors okay um but mainly like whether you're single or married and then whether you are um how many allowances you're going to take okay so we use the percentage method and there are several steps and we're just going to go through it here. I'm not going to be able to do you the same justice that I, that I could in the classroom, but you can use this for reference. OK, um, so the percentage method is going to use table not tables 9.1 and 9.2 in your book. OK, so these are going to you're going to use these in order to figure out what's going on. OK. And let's just look at this example. Janet Wong earns $26.50 for week 49. She's married with two allowances. What is her federal income tax? So here's what we have to do. Whenever you have a problem like this, the first thing you have to do, well, let's see what their, their step is. In table 9-1, locate the weekly withholding for one allowance. Multiply this times two because she has two allowances. So here's the thing. When we go back here, you look at she's paid weekly so what's the allowance this is this is one withholding allowance so for a weekly person this is one withholding allowance okay so it's 7980 but here's the thing she has two allowances and this says that what we do is we multiply this number times 2 so 7980 times 2 is 15960 what do we do with that well, we subtract that from their their pay. So their pay is $26.50. So you subtract that from their pay. Okay? What we're essentially saying is this is going to be what, what we're basing things on now instead of this. So we're going to take this these allowances out of here. All right? What's step three? Then we go to the next table and we find this amount on that chart so if we go back what was it like 24 let's see here 24 90 40 right 
So we look, what we're doing is we're looking between here to see where it falls. It's going to be in one of these groups, 2490. It's not between these two. It's not between these two. It's between 1711 and 3395, right? So what this tells us is that our tax withholding is going to be composed of two things. Number one, this 171.36 plus 22% of any amount that's over 1711. So we're gonna pay, or they're gonna withhold 171.36, and let's go back so you know what we're doing here. So right here, 2490, we go back to this chart and say, okay, where does 2490 fall? This goes from 222 to 588, nope. 588 to 17, nope. 17 to 33.95, yeah, so it falls in this category, this band right here. So this is where we're gonna figure out how much we're gonna withhold, and it's gonna be 171.36 plus 22% of any amount over 17.11. So we're saying any amount of this that's over 17.11, we're gonna pay that 22% of. Now, how do we figure out how much is over 17.11? Well, we subtract, 1711 from this right so 1711 2490 40 minus 1711 is 779 so when we went to that band we said okay it's between 1711 and 3395 on that other chart and that told us that our tax was going to be 17136 plus 22 percent of anything above 1711, which the amount above 1711 is 779.40. So it's going to be 171.36 plus 22% of 779.40. Well, 22% of 79.40 is 171.47. So add these together, and that's going to be what your withholding is. That's how much they're going to take out of your check. Doesn't mean that's your tax. You might get a refund at the end of the year, or if you're not withholding properly, you might owe money at the end of the year. Okay, now I know that's a lot of steps, but you have this, follow these steps, and also you can go through my video to, to help you as well. Last resort, if you're having trouble working something out, by all means, reach out to me and I can help you, okay? Now, let's talk about, uh, let's talk a little bit more about FICA and Medicare. There's a couple of things that I want you to understand. First of all, uh, these are employee deductions, but also this says funded by the, the Federal Insurance Contribution Act. Okay, here's what's happening. When you pay this money, which you absolutely do, your company also pays this money. They match you. I don't know if everybody realizes. So when you make, if someone's agreeing to pay you $10 an hour, they're agreeing to pay you $10 plus a little bit more, at least like 7.8% more because they have to pay for this as well. You pay, but then they also pay. And, and the Medicare is, uh, it, your Medicare is funded by what you pay into the system and then what your company pays. So there should be a lot there. And then your social security that you should receive later is funded by you and your company. This says it's funded by uh, the Federal Insurance Contribution Act. I hate that terminology because what they're saying is we are funding you that money. No, they're not funding you anything. What This is the act that actually requires it to be funded, but the government does not give you anything. It comes from you and your company. I was on a soapbox there. Sorry. Um, and the way it's calculated is that you pay, people pay 6.2% of the first 128,000. Anything above that, they don't have to pay on. But on Medicare, you pay 1.45 no matter what on everything. So assuming the above rates, how much Social Security and Medicare will employee pay if they have earned a weekly salary of $26.50 and $127.2 total by week 49? Okay, so here's the thing. They've paid... What, they've already uh, earned 127.2. So how much is left? You have to subtract this, right? So this is what twelve hundred dollars, and only twelve hundred dollars of this, not this entire amount, because they've already earned 127.2. Uh, they only have twelve hundred dollars more to pay Social Security on. So 
they're going to pay only on this extra $1,200. So $1,200 times that 6.2%, $7,440. That's going to be deducted from their check. But they are going to pay 1.45% of this entire amount, which is $3,843. So these two things are going to come out of your FICA uh, for your FICA taxes for Social Security and Medicare. Now, in addition to that, your company is also paying um, unemployment tax. And they pay a federal unemployment tax as well as, as well as the state unemployment tax. They pay 6% at the federal level, and they pay 5.4% at the state level. But this 5.4% can be credited to the 6%. So in other words, they don't have to pay 11.4%. They they pay 6% unless they, they're only going to max out at 6% unless they have a bad history with employees. They, they get rid of people improperly. Then their unemployment insurance is going to be a little bit more because usually the state bumps it up, right? So even though this might be, in fact, I think we have, yeah, so we have an example here of 5.8, but only 5.4 can be credited towards that, right? So they're only going to pay this 6% extra right so if they pay 5.4 they only owe another six percent um for the uh for the federal right but if this is higher than 5.4 percent they're still going to pay the six percent they're just going to pay that higher rate so let's assume a company has total wages of twenty thousand dollars but four thousand dollars are exempt from state unemployment tax what are the company's uh state and federal taxes uh if the company's rate is 5.8 because they have poor employment record. It should be 5.4, but it's up. So they're gonna pay 5.4 on the non-exempted amount, which is 20,000 minus 400, 16,000. But they're only gonna pay, you're not gonna create, um, you're not gonna get an exemption for any less than this, right? So you still have to pay based, you have to assume this is 4.8% or, 5.4%. So the difference is uh, six. If you look at this, they're still charging six, even though if this is 5.8, like if this is 5.8, this would be 0.2%. Uh, no, you still have to pay the the 0.6. So 16,000 is the amount that it's based upon. 16,000 times that 5.8% is 920. And the 16,000 times the 0 0.006, six tenths of a percent, is 96. This isn't 0, 0, 002. You don't subtract these. You just, this is just how only 5.4 is creditable to the federal. Okay? So, um, that's everything. Work through the problems. And of course, you have these videos. But like I said, if you, um, if you find that things are a little bit challenging, look at this video again, um, or you can reach out to me. By all means, reach out to me, set up a time, and I'll help work you through whatever your challenges are. So good luck, everybody.